Insulin is not the enemy, but it does stop fat loss. We do need to manipulate when we have insulin spikes and when we have lower levels of insulin. Today's video is about cyclic adenosine monophosphate, which you probably want to click off the video right now, but I promise I'm going to make it very easy to understand. Cyclic adenosine monophosphate is what allows fat burning to happen inside a cell. And it turns out that insulin stops that process altogether back until insulin levels are low again. I do want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button before we get down into the nitty gritty and then also please hit the little bell icon to turn on notifications. We have daily videos and I promise you won't be disappointed. It's really good content. After this video, check out Ujido Matcha. They are an amazing company and tremendous supporter of this channel. And if you're looking for a little bit of a caffeine boost without all the jitters and you're looking for more of just a good quality green tea, they are 180 year old matcha company out of Japan. Super good, super legit, and they are very, very cool people and they've been supporting this channel for a while. So special link down below if you wanna check them out. Okay, so cyclic adenosine monophosphate, I've talked about in other videos, is what is called a secondary messenger. What that means is if you have a catalyst for fat loss, uh, let's say exercise, for instance, exercise is going to trigger adrenaline. Adrenaline burns fat, but adrenaline itself doesn't burn fat. Adrenaline is just the messenger, the first messenger. And it's the job of the adrenaline to go knock on the door of the cell and say, hey, 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 it's time to burn fat. And that wakes up all these little guys inside the cell, these little guys called cyclic adenosine monophosphate. And these little messengers that wake up inside the cell, they then turn on the fat burning processes inside a cell. Not just fat burning, but also carb burning too, depending on the circumstance, but we're not gonna go there today. So the simple point to comprehend before I go into the detail of this video is that fat burning is not really possible without having this cyclic adenosine monophosphate. So why should we have caffeine prior to a workout? Or why should we have caffeine periodically, not all the time, but periodically when we're interested in burning fat? Well, it's a way to sort of reverse that insulin problem we talked about. I don't wanna say reverse and really loosely, but I'm using it in a colloquial fashion just to kind of get the point across. So if insulin stops the secondary messenger, then we need something that is going to promote the secondary messenger. Well, caffeine does something very unique. Caffeine turns off the enzyme that stops cyclic adenosine monophosphate from breaking down. Normally, when insulin goes up, we have an increase in what is called phosphodiesterase. And phosphodiesterase is an enzyme that comes in and it keeps all the cyclic adenosine monophosphate from waking up. So let me give you another example to paint a picture. You go for a sprint, adrenaline upregulates, your body's ready to burn fat, so the adrenaline goes to the cell, knocks on the door, but nobody's waking up. Guys, wake up, wake up, we gotta burn fat. We're not burning, we, got, we gotta go, this guy's running. Nope, just they're out. Why? Because phosphodiesterase had come in and blocked it. Insulin, phosphodiesterase. Caffeine prevents the phosphodiesterase from ever putting them to sleep. It creates a blockade. So now the adrenaline can go knock on the door, wake those suckers up, and they're gonna be like, yes, yes, let's go. I want you to envision, uh, you know, Full Metal Jacket, the movie, right? Boot camp, like drill sergeant runs in, rattles them all out of bed, and they're up on their feet at attention, ready to go. That's what we want. When that hormone, when that signal comes bum rushing in, we want it to be able to wake those troops up and wake that cyclic adenosine monophosphate up because that CAMP is what is going to tell the cell, heck yes, burn that fat, go through lipolysis, burn it. So in essence, what caffeine does is it increases our fat burning potential. Now what I mean by fat burning potential is caffeine isn't going to magically make you burn fat. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't do the work for you, but it makes it so that you have more cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Because you're stopping the breakdown of it, more can accumulate. So imagine having 10 fat burning activation troops and then imagine having 50 because they don't get to break broken down. The caffeine is stopping the breakdown, so they're just building and building and building. So then, the moment that you do break into your high intensity interval training, or the moment that you do break into that sprint, the lever that you pull is that much bigger for fat burning. 
because there's more of the troops to do the job. So you can get by with a little bit less. So caffeine promotes the potential of more fat burning if you're willing to do the work. But the good question that comes to be is, can it potentially reverse the effect of insulin? If insulin it has an effect where it stops cyclic adenosine monophosphate, can caffeine blunt that effect of insulin? This is getting complex and you may have left the video, but you may be a trooper and you may really want to learn. The science is inconclusive and it all comes down to being dose dependent. If you have a big spike in insulin and then you have some caffeine that's marginal amounts, well, probably not going to have an effect. But if you spike your insulin with maybe a little bit of amino acids or something like that, there's a very good chance that you might be able to blunt it with some caffeine. So if you screw up, let's say you're fasting and you accidentally have some amino acids that spike your insulin or something like that, having a little bit of caffeine may be able to hold the negative effect back a little bit. So this is getting complicated and it's high level coaching stuff, but if you're really into that biohacking piece and getting down to the granular, then this is for you. This isn't for the masses. Anyhow, that's what it comes down to. Caffeine is your friend in moderation. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. We'll see you tomorrow.